Welcome to Next Level Intel. So we've been looking at autofilling within Microsoft Excel, and today we're going to take it to the next level when we explore a data table. We're just building upon our foundation here, and I'm going to jump right in and just start calculating a formula. In cell K2, I'm going to hit the equal sign. That tells Excel that we're going to insert a formula. I'm going to click on H2, hit the multiply symbol, and click on I2. Now, you might be confused at this point. You're saying, how come the formula is not showing H2 multiplied by I2? Instead, it says at unit and at unit cost. And the reason is because of that autofill functionality that we discussed. It is referencing the header, and it is going to actually populate all the way down the column as soon as I hit enter. And so in total price, I'm going to actually put in the formula equals H2 multiplied by J2. I'm going to hit the enter key, and then you'll see that it actually populates down still too. It can get kind of confusing, but just know in a data table, it's referencing the header. So now I'm going to calculate the selling profit. So equals total price L2 minus total cost K2. And then we're going to calculate the selling profit. So equals... I'm just going to hit my arrow this time, divided by, and I'll hit my arrow twice, and there we go, it populates. Now, you'll see that my numbers are formatted with dollar signs. We're going to discuss that in another video, but first, we're diving into this table. I want to show you one more thing. When you have the cursor on the table, a new tab comes up labeled as design. If you click on that tab, you'll see a grouping for table style options. You can click the total row. And you get this nice total row that just pops up at the bottom of your table. If you go all the way to the right here, underneath the selling profit percentage, we can actually calculate an average. Underneath selling profit, we can just sum it up. And then I can do that all along the bottom. Just click on these drop down and select something from the list. But instead, I'm going to go where my crosshairs are here. When we get that cross symbol, hold and drag. And you'll see that Excel just took that sum formula and populated in each of these columns here. Now, this is something that is really, really cool about a table. I'm going to click in cell M13. I'm going to hit the tab key once. You'll see that it goes to the next cell. But when I hit the tab key at the end of a table, it drops me to the next line. And it pulls those formulas down. Now, column H, I, and J, those are are not formulas. They will be, however, in a future video. But for right now, you'll see that I can type in the product number, which I should make a formula because this is going to be consistent all the way down, but that's 13. And then I can start inputting more data. So let's say somebody else bought an iced tea. If you already have a word in your column, Excel will try to help you out in spelling that word. So instead of finishing the word iced tea right now, I'm just going to hit the tab key. And so you'll see that when I start to type large, LA is in large and in the word lays. It won't make an assumption on a word until you get to a certain point. So now that I'm at LAR, it's assuming that I want the word large. And so I'm going to keep it. So let's just say that Joe Smith also bought something, except for he bought it on 9-4-2018. He's a repaid customer. He paid with check before, but today he paid with a card. He... Purchase two and it cost me 70 cents. He paid two bucks for it. You'll see that my formulas automatically calculated the data as we inserted it into Microsoft Excel. And that is what we want. We want to save ourselves time. We want to automate processes. This is Next Level Intel. Thank you for watching and God bless.